G'day, fellas, and welcome to game number five in the series between Beastie Cutie, who spawns on the south side of the map playing as the Holy Roman Empire, and his opponent, Puppy Paw, who spawns in on the north side of the map, also playing as the Holy Roman Empire. This map, of course, is Hill and Dale. It is a map that is, uh, well, it's a little bit interesting because it's quite easy to wall up on Hill and Dale. So typically you see players pick a little bit more defensive civilizations. That's why we've got the Holy Roman Empire out here today. No China, which is a little bit surprising to me. This civilization seems to be a, a one that's rising up, but it's great to see players here picking the Holy Roman Empire. Obviously, they've received a whole bunch of buffs. And I got a feeling today, I don't know about you guys, Holy Roman Empire is going to win this game. I mean, by the same token, we're also going to see the Holy Roman Empire lose as well. So something to be aware of. But uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how it goes because typically in this matchup, what you would expect is a very fast Imperial coming out from both of these players. And I suspect that's going to be the case. And I'm, I'm curious what's going to set them apart because... I suspect Puppy Paw probably didn't want to get this matchup on this map. This is a difficult matchup for him. And keep in mind, we are on set point at this point in time, or match point. So it's currently 3-1 in this series. If Beastie Cutie wins this game, then he goes on to the grand finals. And Puppy Paw is going to be playing for third place at best. But keep in mind, obviously, this is Golden League. There's going to be a huge amount of money that is on the line. And in addition to that money, there is also going to be a golden ticket going over towards the first and the second player in this game for the Red Bull Wallalo. That is correct. The $500,000 Age of Empires tournament, it is coming and it will be uh, the winner and the second place will also be getting that ticket. So obviously these guys want to fight over for that. But in the event that Beastie Cutie wins, then Puppy Paw either needs to, uh, Puppy Paw needs to win the, the third and fourth place match uh, for him to guarantee himself that seat. Because obviously going through with that as well will guarantee him a huge bump up in that prize pool as well. So he'd really want to try and keep himself in the game here. So... A bit unfortunate. Uh, I, I, the reason why I say it's unfortunate that he's got this matchup couple of villagers underneath the town center right there. That is awkward. They're just going to be moving over towards the wood line instead. Probably a smart move there because otherwise they're not doing too much. Sheep going to be coming back in now. But um, the, the reason why I say it's, it's probably not the best for him or not the most favorable for him. I saw a drive-by right there. Uh, is because when you're playing up against Beastie Cutie, he loves to play it in the late game. And he's incredibly competent when it comes to the late game. And the longer these games go, the more likely he wins. And the problem is, even in a, in a mirror match, he's got all the same tools that you've got. So naturally, you would expect that the games would go longer in mirror matches. And as a result, you would expect Beastie Cutie to have an advantage there. Now, in the event that this had been, let's say, Beastie came in as China or, you know, something a little bit different, then at least Puppy Paw's got some, some sort of variable that he can play with. That's going to be the big difference here. But obviously, he doesn't. So it means he's really going to have to pull a rabbit out of a hat if he wants to try and upset this, maybe look to try and take a, an early relic advantage. We'll have to see exactly how he goes about it. But we do have Ark and Chapels coming up for both players at this point. Puppy Paw going for another bit of a deer push. Now, we've seen this out of the Canadian before. One of those deers running a little bit too far away. You can see it making its way all the way, uh, doing almost like a little bit of a double leap right there. It went really, really far. And you can see he's going to have to usher this one all the way back in. But he's got to be careful because Beastie's actually looming. And if Beastie's paying attention, Beastie will know exactly what's up. Scout going to be coming through, looking like it's going to... Yep, yep, Beastie Cutie doing what he does best, causing havoc. And you can see that he's going to force these, these deer to be killed in unopposed optimal spots, which means the villagers, because they're up against the wood line, basically you, you get that same issue with, that we saw earlier with the villagers being idle underneath the town center is that there's not enough places for them to path here because of the tree, and it means that they get stuck there. So, really nice spot there by BCQD to do that. And great deer pushing coming in from Puppy Paw here, going to not only be saving himself the wood from the mill that he would have dropped down out here, but also pushes those deer right next to the town center. We'll check out how BCQD spawn is doing down to the south. You can see he's got the berries in here. He's also got the lumber camp that's affected, the gold mine that's being affected, and of course, the town center. So a very juicy spawn for Beastie right now. I would have to rate this one. This is about an 8.4, 8.5. And you know the best part is, if he really wanted to, he could push these deer in himself uh, and, and get them right in on the edge of this town center. Um, so that is something that we will look out for. We'll see if he looks to play it that way. Okay. Scout's still out on the map at this point in time. So what, what, would, what do we expect out of these two players? Do we expect professional scouts? No, we do not. Uh, I would expect that both of these guys are going to be looking to get up to a castle as quickly as they can. Um, and I would say, it, honestly, if I'm Puppy Paw right now, 
Perfect decision. Perfect decision. You want to be throwing. You want to be throwing something out at Beastie Cutie. You want to be mixing it up. You cannot just be enabling Beastie Cutie to be doing everything that you're doing, because whether you like it or not. He's just going to do it better than you. It's simply the fact he's just very, very good in those late game positions. And now Puppy Paw actually bringing his own scouts over. We can see that Beastie Q was going for a counter push. Or rather, not a counter push, but Beastie was going for his own sort of push. And Puppy Paw says, mm -mm -mm, not today. So this is the consequence of, uh, of Beastie just sort of taking his time. We did see his scouts were out in the open. That He was down here a little bit earlier just scouting this one out. And now he gets punished for it because BC was going to be looking to push in his own deer. And unfortunately, his opponent, Puppy Paw, able to come through and, and dish out a little bit more damage. But we do see the first horseman making its way out. And the barracks going to be coming down as well. Super smart moves coming out here from Puppy Paw. So for anybody wondering exactly what Puppy Paw is doing, even though this might look like feudal aggression, and technically, yes, it is, it's not big feudal aggression. What is Ideally, what you want to do in this p position here is look to try and get out just three or four horsemen, two or three spearmen, and then that's going to enable you to push and try and take down any prelates that try and leave the base. And with that, you're going to buy yourself a huge amount of momentum because on this map, there are five relics. Three of them are contested. Two of them are safe. So this relic here, it's considered safe for Beastie. This relic considered safe for Puppy Paw. But up towards the, the base, you can see this one. <laughs> this one's technically considered a contested relic. These two also contested relics. So players will be fighting over that. And so there's a chance here that Puppy Paw could look to deny out all of the relics for his opponent. Now, obviously, this one here, you're not going to be able to deny that. But there's a good chance he could deny the other relics. And now we see Spearman, Horseman together working in tandem. Puppy Paw continuing to come around. He's got a nice little spot over to the backside, and we do now see that horseman coming out in response from Beastie. Beastie's still yet to go up to that castle age, but you can see he's already got the stable down, already got the horseman coming out, and that's what makes that spearman so smart because that spearman's going to guarantee that he's, he's able to have position. And now we see the Regnitz Cathedral coming down before six or before seven minutes. A very nice little timing here, and just beautiful little micro coming in on this backside. And you can see Puppy Paw's making his way around the corner here, not opting towards this. this I, I would almost say a, a bit of a, a faster route doesn't have to go all the way around that backside uh, but now heading down towards the gold mine and you can see this is where he wants to put his attention this is where he wants to hit hard because he knows that if he takes out his enemy gold sources then it's going to mean that there's no prelates in queue it's going to mean that there's no knights potentially coming and now we can see that another prelate has been made so in total two prelates at the moment he's got one inside that arkham chapel second one is coming out doing a little bit of healing out here as well keep in mind he's got the spearman spearman gonna be looking to dish out a little bit of damage we'll try and get him nice and close right there but uh, it looks like the prelate gonna be able to heal up i think one of those horsemen will go down Horseman goes down as well for Puppy Paw. So a decent little trade there. But, but uh, in the end, I think there was a scout and a horseman that both went down. Indeed, that's a scout. That's a horseman. But he does get to stick on, on that gold mine. But you can see it's quite close to that town center. And as a result, it's going to mean that uh, he's he's not really able to, to dive in underneath the town center and force away these villagers from this gold mine. He's just being very annoying and buying himself a lot of space. So we look at Beastie right now. He's heading out towards this relic. And you can see that Puppy is already anticipating this. And he sits here, waits for it. At the same time, he's got the Prelate sitting inside the Arkham, still struggling here with this cleanup. Prelate inside the Arkham, yet to move out. But let's go have a look at Puppy Paw, because he's got two relics, or rather two uh, two Prelates on the field. First one is buffing up the Gold Villagers, second one inside the Arkham. But I suspect he's going to be moving out and looking to try and take control of these relics. And we hear a Wallalog begins to come down towards the south side of the map very loud. Looks like the horseman will be able to make it out alive and now going to be slowing down the push of Beastie. And this is the thing, right? Because we talked about it a bit earlier. The gold that was that was being harassed, it, it slows down the gold production and then it means that there's less prelates out on the field. And now you can see we've got two knights in queue and a single prelate. And so we've got that, that position where there's a little bit less gold than you would like to have. Also got got uh, Spearman guarding up the front. We'll take a look at how Puppy Paw is doing as the first prelate is moving out. We've got a second prelate that are moving out towards those contested relics. And a third prelate has already picked up that first contested relic. So we've got one, two, three potentially contested relics that will go over. And now Beastie becomes aware of that. When, when this triggers off, Beastie gets a notification. He says, hey, your enemy is up here. And you can see the knight just heading straight towards that position. He knows exactly what is up. He is heading there with haste. Another Wallalong down towards the base of Puppy Paw now. He's trying to take control of these horsemen, but you can see that relic. It is going to get thrown even closer towards the Regnitz. It's probably not going to get through, but he's going to be very happy getting that almost guaranteed relic inside the base. So it basically leaves a single relic on the map in play for Beastie to actually take. So Puppy Paw takes the relic lead right now. 
Technically, this one's not in his position, but we're, we're, I'm definitely happy to, to call that one for him. A three to one relic advantage, which means the Beastie Cutie is going to have to try and push to take this relic. And we can now see that Puppy Paw is walling this up. So good luck to him. He is really struggling now. We take a look at the perspective of Beastie and he's got a scout in position. He's actually got a knight. So could look to deny this wall before it even comes up. Beastie just being so smart. He knows that, okay, my enemies picked up those three relics. I couldn't really contest them. You know, ideally you can buy yourself time with, with, with the knight. But at the end of the day, it's highly likely that you're just going to be losing that knight. But here you deny that villager denies the walls such a smart move from beastie and now i suspect he was probably even gonna have a prelate on the way indeed he's got a prelate on the way so at the moment we've got one relic uh for beastie over on the other side we've got two relics uh that are coming in uh very very quickly in fact we've got the first one the second one and the third one is sitting here ready to go but I feel like Puppy Paw has almost forgotten about this this whole relic up towards the north. And you can see Beastie Cutie almost baiting him away from this position and, and looking to try and cause his attention in other areas. Puppy Paw not even camping it. I don't even think he realizes that, hey, that wall didn't go up, mate. You've got you've got a, yourself a problem on your hand because Beastie Cutie's got to march in a prelate right now and he's actually going to be evening up that Regnitz relic count. And that's exactly what he wants to do because right now he's sitting on 300 gold a minute and compare that over to his opponent who's on 600 gold a minute. This will make it 700 gold a minute but when you really compare the pair if beastie manages to capture this relic which he's done he's picked it up and now he's got a, a fair bit of a march to make his way back but that could be 600 gold versus 700 gold a minute and that is that's not a big difference i'm not too fussed about that and i don't think beastie cutie would be either i think that you, it's something that you're very easily able to make up the difference for in just a, a, a single trade or two so well, obviously it will mean that Beastie's still going to have to pull out the out playbook, uh, but the question is going to be whether Puppy Paw is going to be able to capitalize on that slight lead. And I really feel like it's a big mistake from him because he's got he's got the ability to take this out. If if he was thinking, if he had half the brain switched on right now, he would for sure be focusing that one on. And I, I feel terrible saying that about the guy because he's obviously obviously an incredibly competent player. But I can't help but feel he's let this get away. A four relic to one advantage would be massive. Seven hundred gold versus. 600 gold or 800 gold versus 300 it is a massive difference it goes from being a 100 gold difference to a 500 gold difference and that's really where the tell like the, the, it's just such a big difference but now it sounds like we've got an age up coming through beastie cutie you're gonna be dropping down that palace of swabia looking to print some villages out he's got night numbers out and a couple of villages moving forward here as well looking to repair up that that uh, that wall he's gonna be careful though those villages will die it's i don't i don't know whether it's a bug or a feature but it just feels a little bit weird that the villagers do get killed through the wall despite there being a very clear wall there uh, to prevent them from being attacked but now those villagers will go down puppy paw gonna be taking the villager lead and beastie cutie gonna be on the defense in this early stage of the game age up coming through at about just shy of 13 minutes not a bad little time considering how much military he's already gotten out for himself that second relic is slowly but steadily coming through so you're definitely gonna have to be happy for beastie in this position to have made it himself he, he went from a very awkward opening to all of a sudden not looking terrible it, it, it's starting to look a little bit better for him. He's, he's managed to get himself up in the Castle Age, or rather into the Imperial Age. And we can see that over on the other side, Puppy Paw going to be doing the same thing. He's already started his farm transition. He's got a lumber upgrades coming through as well. He's got the three relics in the bag, but honestly, it doesn't make a huge difference. It really doesn't make a big difference uh, having that three relics over the, the, the two relics. Four versus one, massive difference. Three versus two, mm -mm -mm, not a big deal. But now Wall's coming up for Puppy Paw, a very smart move fit here for him. Obviously, his enemy is an Imperial, and he's got to respect the fact that there could be an elite night timing, and that's something you've always got to be careful in, in this matchup. And that's something that we probably haven't really spoken about much in as, as well with this matchup is the type of um, compositions that you can expect players to be making so one of the big things to note is you almost never see a holy roman empire player make an archery range they will make a bombard before they make an archery range because their bombard is is basically serving the same purpose as that archer In, instead of, of of that what they're going to be looking to do is going into stables as well as barracks compositions and what that means is that you're going to be running melee compositions and you know what that means that means land connects are going to be the flavor of the game here i suspect and, uh, it, you know, it's, it's quite an interesting dynamic as well in this matchup because you don't really see the Lance Connect come out a huge amount. But as soon as you throw a Holy Roman Empire mirror down, it is like Lance Connect City. It is just crazy. And I would suspect in, the, in this late game position here that we are going to see massive amounts of Lance Connect coming out for both of these players here because they are going to be absolutely determining the difference here between these players. Just simply because if you ignore a Lance Connect, 
you're ignoring a really big problem because those things hit in they're, they're like trucks basically they hit so damn hard uh, and uh i i suspect that uh, it's going to be something that uh, that both players are probably going to live to regret if they allow those lands connects to come through but now we've got that swabia coming up from puppy paw We've got 46 villages for him. Compare that over to Beastie, who's on 57 villages. And we've got a whole suite of upgrades coming through for Beastie at this point. We've got Mana Arms upgrades coming through. We've got all the Tier 1 economic upgrades coming through as well as Heavy Maces. So he is looking to really solidify his economic uh, prowess in this Imperial Age. Both players now up to the Imperial Age. No Elite Knight upgrades coming through just yet for either player. We'll take a look up towards the north. And I tell you what, I feel like Puppy Paw's definitely going to be kicking himself at the fact that he lost this, this relic. This relic was just really, really painful for him to lose because it would have guaranteed his position and it would have meant for the rest of the game that he was going to be ab ha able to have a huge advantage over Beastie, especially in a mirror matchup where, as we mentioned, you know, you, you need to try and find something when you're up against a player. And look, at the end of the day, it, it, it's just the way that it is. Beastie Cutie is just... He is a he's a stronger player than Puppy Paw at the moment, uh, and look, I suspect that that may change in the future. Puppy Paw is a young kid; he's a bright kid. He's got a huge future in front of him, and I'm looking forward to seeing how he's able to to, to really push himself in this game. But he's definitely going to be kicking himself after that that early little loss. But now Knight's Mass starting to build up here, heading into wait. Puppy Paw is going into Elite Lance Connect straight away. He doesn't even have a Lance Connect out on the field, and he's going straight into. Oh, never mind. I take it back. There he is, Ronald McDonald making his way out. And I love the thing when you see the Elite upgrade come through. Take a look at the difference on the pants between these guys. So right now he's got yellow tube socks, but you wait. As soon as he comes to Elite, he gets the Ronald McDonald upgrade and he, he goes yellow and red. Hold on. Well, I'm trying to get a good view on this guy. There we go. Yellow and red. There it is. The Ronald McDonald makes his way onto the field to serve out some delicious fries. But uh, unfortunately, the fries that he's serving are very sharp, so do be careful. But um, Beastie on the other side, we see that he is going for Lance Connect as well. We'll take a look and see. He doesn't have the Elite upgrade just yet. But I wouldn't be surprised if it is a very heavy Lance Connect uh, focus game. You can see Men at Arms coming out for Beastie here. Uh, but I feel like this might almost be like a, a bit of a, a habit that sort of, you know, old habits die hard. You, you go for Men at Arms and you're like, wait, why am I even bothering building Men at Arms? So typically the, the composition you would expect in this matchup is going to be, it's a bit of a, a, bit of a weird one. Knights or, yeah, Knights and Lance Connects and Bombards. And then Culverin as well uh, get thrown out depending on the Bombards. So obviously there's Men at Arms that get thrown in there as well to try and, you know, oomph up that, that extra little bit of damage. Ideally, you want your Men at Arms to be tanking and your your Lance Connects to be swinging um, and your Knights to be charging. That, that's pretty much it. But uh, interesting mill delete there. Okay, it's going to be a stone wall that gets placed down here for Beastie. So he's going to be looking, but one villager has gone idle. And this could be a problem. This could be a huge problem. That villager is idle. Look at this. The villager that was assigned to this wall is gone idle. And now all of a sudden, Beastie Cutie going to be under massive threat. That villager only just realizing they're now going to be able to break through the wall. Huge consequences right now for a single idle villager with Beastie Cutie now losing potentially a huge amount of villagers as those knights break through the stone wall just when you thought it was safe, my friend. No, it it was not and all the villagers evacuate the dance floor beastie now gonna be running towards that town center but we see the lance connect coming in to reinforce on this position he's looking a little bit better a little bit healthier but that villager count gonna start to dwindle he's on 85 at the moment compare that to 74 and never mind that villager count ain't going anywhere baby that is plenty of villagers in the back pocket for beastie so he does lose a lot of villagers over on this position but i tell you what he's done a great job in cleaning it up that is for sure and now a keep gonna be coming up towards the front of his base as well this is gonna solidify that position and now we're going to be looking to sort of take, uh, establish himself out on the map. This is the big thing about Hill and Dale. It's about getting yourself out on the map. And you can see the Beastie is doing that, moving forward slowly and steadily with these outposts. You can see that the, the wood count here is starting to slow down for him. He's done a good job in, in exhausting that smaller uh, forest. And now that second larger forest, you can see it's almost running out. So he's going to have to start thinking about whether he expands out towards the east. But you can see there may be some pressure out there as we've got more stone walls and Beastie going to be stonewalling up himself. Hopefully he doesn't, hopefully doesn't bug out this time in fact we can see 16 lands connects coming out right now as well looking to try and get into position yet to get too many of the upgrades through just yet we'll take a look and see whether a university has come through for puppy paw indeed it has but no elite army tactics just yet for anybody unfamiliar with elite army tactics it will buff up the health as well as the damage by 20 percent on your melee infantry which is pretty crazy when you think about it if you're doing 20 damage that's 25 Four damage that you're going to be doing instead. So a pretty decent amount. Looks like Beastie going to be able to get this wall up, uh, but for him it's going to be about looking to expand into the middle of the map because from here 
it, 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 his resources are starting to run dry. You can see villagers now going to be forced to go over onto that larger gold vein. Ideally, you want to leave that one until later on in the game. But now our first bombard going to be coming out as well. And Beastie going to be able to take a fight in the middle here. Looks like a couple of men at arms just going to be falling back from this position. He decides against taking it. And instead, that keep going to be coming up. He's going to be careful with that bombard. The bombard definitely looking like it might be in a bit of a vulnerable position. And Beastie Cutie going to be falling back once again. You can see he's under attack at multiple angles. Men at arms down towards the south are going to be trying to stop those villagers from doing an aggressive wall. The bombard tower continues to fire down, or rather the, bo the bombard emplacement on that keep continues to fire down, and it looks like a pretty decent trade there for Beastie. He manages to keep his bombard alive, and that was the big, that was the big ticket item for him right there. Continuing to wall up, though, we can see he's got some nice little walls that are just beginning over on the edges here. And don't you just love the way the walls just seamlessly make their way into the edge of the map? Wouldn't it be great if, they, if units could actually get up on top of the walls from here? Obviously, they can't, but wouldn't it be great if they could? Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't it be absolutely great? But <laughs> we can hear sacred sites being taken up towards the north. A little bit of a raid coming through as well. Beastie looking to try and take control of the map. You can see he's done a good job at denying these positions from coming up. He's got walls down on this south side to potentially defend against any raids. He's also got the university, but yet to actually go for the elite army tactics himself. Royal Knights, or rather elite knights coming out now for his opponent. Bombards are going to be repaired up by those villagers. And you can see that immediately Puppy Paw just backs away from that position. He knows that there's no point in even going for that just because the repair rate on those villagers is absolutely ludicrous. And now Beastie Cutie looks to try and defend. He's got the second Bombard out as well. We'll tune in with Puppy Paw and see how he's doing. It looks like he's going to be going into Horseman. This is an interesting decision. Going into Horseman. Uh, in, the, in this matchup, I guess it's probably something a little bit more mobile. And you can see now sending more units down to build this wall. But that single man at arms just going to be blocking that position. Puppy Paw having to fall back from that. Keep in the center. He's going to be going down as well. Those Bombards are very effective. And one of the things that you do start to see in this matchup is Culverin Masses. So you will potentially see up to six or seven Culverins getting masked up in this matchup just because siege superiority in the event that you've got siege superiority so what does that mean that let's say you've got seven culverin and your enemy's got zero because you killed them all well now your culverin are going to be firing down upon your enemy and they do a fair bit of damage 85 damage you're talking about a lance connect with 95 health so these guys are going to two-shot a lance connect so it's a fair amount of damage that actually comes out for these culverin so by having just even culverin alive and this is probably something that i would i would happily advocate for reducing the amount of damage that Siege does at a base level. Now, obviously, you're getting hit in the face with a giant round. Uh, it, it's going to hurt, for sure. But is it a good thing for balance? Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. So I, I think making them a little bit less effective against uh, units is, is going to be a great start for them. Make, make them a little bit more specialized against Siege, because if they do stay alive, you, you can see them be quite, uh, quite strong uh, units once they start getting massed up as well. But now we can see Beastie looking to try and take control of the map. He's starting to wall up, up. We see him also moving out units on alternate sides of the map. He's been cleaned up towards this northern position. Lance Connect out here doing a great job. But at the same time, Puppy Paw doing a pretty decent job of just preventing this from coming through. And now we actually see Beastie going for some Palisade walls, looking to try and control the narrative and prevent any pass-throughs. He's established himself out on this central wood line. And we talked about this a bit earlier. You can see just how dire the situation got back here on his, uh, on, on his main wood line. But now that third Bombard coming out and Beastie looking to continue spreading this wall out. And I love the way that he does this. Just very slow, very methodical. He established himself over on this, this Western front and now going to be continuing pushing up on that position. Looks like that single man at arms does get cleaned up over on that, that uh, wood line towards the north. But now Beastie Cutie going to be continuing to, to add in more. So at this point in time, I mean, who's, who's at the advantage or who's got the advantageous position? Well, you'd probably have to say, well, it would be Puppy Paw, right? Because he's got that extra relic. But realistically, in the late game, an extra relic ain't going to make a big difference. In fact, when it comes to the late game, the big thing that's going to make a difference is your APM and your proficiency in that late game. And this is something that I talked about, is the longer that this game goes, even though the extra relic is on the side of Puppy Paw, it makes less of a difference when you've got a person who's got, you know, 450 APM in the late game, and those are very effective action per minute as well. That is a, a key factor, is that those are effective actions per minute. He's clicking, he's telling his units. I mean, we can ride on board right now with the Beastie Cam, and we can see exactly exactly what he's looking at you can spot you know just absolutely everywhere all over the map right now he's looking he, he's just paying attention doing a nice little bit of macro here he's not paying attention to the fights that are happening up towards the north he's not fussed about it we're just seeing you know on board with beastie how damn quickly he is going and now men at arms just moving out you know he's multitasking in so many different spots shift queuing those units all the way through it is just a, a thing of beauty at this point
More upgrades coming through. We saw Greased Axles now actually getting Slate and Stone Construction. All buildings gain an extra five fire armor. I don't even think I've ever... I don't think I've ever hovered over this and known the name of known the name of this. But to be fair, I, you don't really get to know many of the unique keep upgrades. Like, uh, the Chinese have got one which increases their tower... Uh, repair rate. Uh, we've got village fortresses. And look at this wall coming down for Beastie in the middle. Bit of a weird wall, but I do like this. Looking to try and die, not dissect, but looking to try and run a bit of a cross section here and prevent just his enemy from having the mobility that he's got from the horseman. Because obviously with the horseman, he's got a little bit more mobility than what Beastie can, can deal with. And now we see Beastie just looking to wall up the center. And I think it's a smart move here. Try and constrict and prevent that enemy from coming through. Now big mass of men at arms. Uh, just a few, a handful of lance connects going to get mixed in decent job of dealing with that that uh, horseman number there but now beastie gonna be able to turn his attention towards this wood line and i think this is very smart by him he's identified well hold on if my enemy is over here he's dropped a keep down he's gonna be gathering up wood here in quite a high number so what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn our attention towards this position and to stop counter attacks from coming through or even just to, to stop any attack from coming through at all what we're gonna do is just wall it all off but it looks like his enemy's gonna be able to get through puppy paw trying to dive through a lot of lands connects in this position as well this could be a bit of a clean up here for Puppy Paw, but Beastie buying himself some decent time, and this is more than enough time for him to clean out this position, and now Puppy Paw going to be pulling the villagers onto the front line if there'd only been a handful of lands connects in this position. He would have been able to take out all of these villagers, but unfortunately, the first one's going to be going down. Second one gets taken out as well. Beautiful trades right now for Puppy Paw. Third one does unfortunately manage to survive. If he just left, he could have just let a, a couple of villagers there die. He would have been very happy, because that bombard, if that bombard goes down, this keep stays alive, and obviously this keep is going to be able to stay alive with the villagers that are here, but oh my lord, no, you gotta be careful, Puppy Paw. Puppy Paw, wake up! Puppy Paw losing all of the villagers underneath the town center. Beastie just gonna be able to clean that up completely right now. And with that, all of the villagers go down, and with the villagers going down, no one's left to repair this position, and it means this bombard is gonna have almost free reign, killing this keep, and then solidifying its position over towards that wood line at the same time we can see that over in the in the middle that we've got a bit of a mass beginning to build up for puppy boy he's got trebuchets and and and, Bo and culverin coming out here trying to take down that wall but you can see he's really struggling there is still a hole in there but if he goes through that hole he's going to be exposing himself to the bombard emplacements or the cannon emplacements that have been built here by beastie and so we can see that he's got great coverage here. Finally going to be able to break through that wall. Sprinkled emplacement firing off for, upon it. And you can see that Beastie just putting up towers absolutely everywhere. Manages to get up the rest of this wall. He's going to be able to, to clinch that position. And it looks like we've got Puppy Paw that did manage to hold up towards this keep. So a very nice job from him doing that. We can see there's another upgrade. What have we got in here? Increases the health of walls, towers, and gates by 40%. That seems like a pretty, <laughs> seems like a pretty decent out, a pretty decent upgrade. Beastie's obviously got it. We'll take a look and see whether he's got court architects just yet. Doesn't look like it. So those buildings still not buffed up all the way in which they, in wh where they could be. But now Culverin's getting some decent trades over there. Beastie not really paying attention. Unfortunately, going to be losing out the first bombard. Second bombard going to be looking to focus down that Culverin. Might actually pick it off them, unless it can get the shot off. And indeed, it looks like he gets the shot off, but unfortunately unfortunately misfires and that culverin is going to be staying alive right now but now gonna have to fall back as beastie once again looks to close the gap upon some more artillery more siege units now potentially looking to attack towards that north side and you can see just how segmented this game is beastie slowly but steadily looking to try and take control the wall eventually did get up for his opponent down towards his south side but beastie's obviously able to move through the center so it doesn't really affect him too much in fact you haven't even really done too much with that wall because you've you've failed to control the center and that means that Beastie's going to be in a very solid position here. We'll do a little bit of an assessment and see where these two players are up to. Village accounts, 125. Compare that over to Puppy, who's on 100 villagers. He's got plenty of villagers in the queue. So give him another three or four minutes and he'll be back up to parity. In fact, you know what? Probably give him another two or three minutes and he'll be back up to where he should be. About that 125, 130 mark is perfect. Nice little clean up down towards the south side. Puppy Paw doing very well uh, to try and take control. But now those Culver are going to be firing off towards his position in the middle. No bombards here for his opponent at this point in time. Just a couple of trebuchets on the backside. And this is a consequence of, of just not having the, those wood lines being fully protected. We can see that there's still any no walls that have come up here either for Puppy Paw. And this is a consequence of just that early pressure that was being put on by Beastie Cutie. So one of the things that you could have seen was stone walls coming up over here in this position. Stone wall coming across like that. Stone wall up towards here. But now it's going to be a lot harder for him to do that because there's military units that are out. There's this outpost. We've got action all over the map. And now we've got some scouts coming out as well looking to try and siege down this outpost towards the north. 
north. Looks like the, these villagers are going to get cleaned up by the meta arms as well. But unfortunately, those those uh, meta arms do lose their lives to the bombard emplacement that has come up on that keep. In the center of the map, we've got a little bit of a push through coming. Unfortunately, that wall did get broken down, and now Beast is going to have to fall back. He's got a whole bunch of units here. A lot of men at arms, though. These guys, I can't help but feel like they might get slaughtered completely by the Lanskinex. Lanskinex is going to be coming out. We'll take a look and see exactly how they managed to do it. Ronald McDonald definitely getting out in force today. Look at those fries just twirling around, and the Lanskinex looking to just absolutely clinch this out. You can see the men at arms trying their best. But unfortunately, just the, the Lance, the Lance connects on the south side just doing very well, trading out incredibly effectively against those men at arms. It looks like Beastie does manage to hold the position, but still a pretty decent trade there for Puppy Paw. And now Beastie going to be looking to try and once again solidify this position. Nice little micro right there, taking out the Culverin. But now a couple more going to be coming out. Elite Horseman coming through as well. You can tell by those golden helmets on top. Beautiful, beautiful units. And now those the Horseman for Beastie Cutie going to be diving in on the backside, looking to try and take out that Culverin. I think he might be able to get it here. One more torch throw. In fact, he does lose the life, unfortunately, and not able to take it out. And now the question comes into, you know, who's got the better position at this point? Who has got the better spot? When it comes to the, the income difference here, you can see that Beastie is miles ahead when it comes to food, miles ahead when it comes to gold. So his economy is definitely a great spot. And his population as well, 93 versus 62 versus 137. Beastie just has a massive margin of difference right now. And he's managed to just eke this out slowly throughout the game uh, when it comes to this, this, this late game. He just manages to always find a way. I don't know how he does it. He just finds a way, he finds an opening potentially against his enemy. But now in the middle of the map, those trebuchets continuing to fire off against this stone wall. And you can see Beastie just constantly rewalling. And that looks like the Horseman going to be able to jump through. Beastie tries to get the rewall, but not going to happen. Horseman looking very strong as they continue to break through that wall. Lance connects on the backside. Going to be able to jump through and secure up this position. No villagers today. No sorry, Bob. Beastie under attack now on this, this front side. It looks like this is definitely going to be a strong counterattack for Puppy Paw. But the main thing I'm concerned about is there's no bombards for Puppy Paw. The thing is, okay, sure, he's got trebuchets. But you got to remember the trebuchets... The DPS on them is so damn low. It looks like the first Bombard is going to be rolling out here for Puppy Paw. Definitely the right choice for him. And now actually looking to do a bit of a counter a, a counter chop down towards the south. He is under attack by a single wolf. You just know, I, I, I hate wolves, man. I just see that wolf and I'm like, I hate you. I hate you so damn much, you annoying wolf. You just, you, you should have been killed in the early game. Unfortunately, you're just going to be harassing over there for the next 27 minutes. So we're not, we're not going to watch his perspective because that is going to be ludicrous, the amount of damage that comes down. And now it looks like a little bit of a raid going to be coming through, landing in on a single lands connect as well as a whole bunch of villagers here on this gold mine. Looks like he's just going to be leaving four horsemen and continue into the rest of the base and Beastie finds a way through. And this is the consequence of not getting stone walls up on that front side. You can see that he's actually found a way through. He's blasted ass all the way through there. And now it looks like horsemen going to be able to jump back in on that town center. Village account at the moment, 142 for Beastie, but 90 villagers for Puppy Paw. It is a significant difference, and it means in these late game situations that Beastie Cutie's gonna be able to, to just replace his units that he's lost so much easier than his opponent, and you can see he's really struggling now. One villager on food right now because he's subsequently uh, lost this position because he failed to stonewall. And this is really, I, I guess, you sort of become naive in the late game. You expect that when it comes to these late game scenarios, that you're going to be able to hold against your enemy. You know, you, he's attacking into your production, but he manages to break through the walls. He does a great job, and you can see that, that, that Puppy Paw is just under attack on all angles right now. Beastie Cutie manages to solidify his position in the middle. A lot of culverins coming out for his opponent, though. Got to be careful as they do tee off, and now going to be taking out those Lance Connects, or rather Men at Arms, looking to try and dish out some damage, but the culverin just barely any damage right there received and village is going to be able to repair that one up as well you can see the keep out here in the middle but those bombards going to have to fall back because there's way too many culverin and one of the things that you could actually see puppy paw do that would be really smart is just put a counter wall through here just put a palisade wall down across this position and prevent beastie from ever getting that up again that would be really really good because he's just going to sneak a villain you can see he's got one ready on the way coming through but now puppy paw looking to try and focus his efforts down the center beastie cutie He's reinforcing his position. Got a lot of lands connects in here. The horsemen have definitely come out in force. I didn't expect this to be something that we would see a lot of in this late game positions, but it definitely seems like Beastie knows how to exploit with them. And we've seen both players actually look to use them with great effect. Lands connects now moving over towards this western front, looking to clean it up. A lot of horsemen here. This couldn't be. This could be bad for the horsemen as the lands connects look to come out and, and connect. Going to be able to melt through those horsemen, but now the bombard emplacements as well on the outpost. Going to be able to dish out some damage. He falls back towards. 
that keep, and you can see him trying his best. It looks like the Lumber Camp is going to get targeted here. Not the most efficient use of Horsemen, I'll say that much. But uh, obviously, there's a lot going on in these late game scenarios. Sacred Side up towards the north, going to be challenged once again. Four Bombards coming out for BC, but remember, remember those cold numbers are starting to look good for Puppy Paw, and this could be the Tides turning, because if he's able to... Oh, I say Tides turning, he's only on 77 villages right now. And his economy is in absolute shambles. Has he got the upgrades at least? He doesn't have precision crossbreeding just yet, but that's okay. I'll forgive him for that. I don't think it's particularly important um, as the game goes on. It's, it's definitely one of those upgrades that you're going to be getting a little bit out of compared to a lot. Uh, Beastie doesn't have it either. So yeah, definitely makes sense. But now we can see that uh, a lot of units out. Culverin's coming out, looking to try and dish out some damage onto the Culverin of his opponent. There's a low health Culver in here. It does look like it's not going to be able to get sniped out. Beastie Cutie going to be trying his best to snipe out the Culver's of his enemy. One Colve goes down, two Colves go down, three Colves go down, and Beastie Cutie loses all of the Colves over on his enemy's side. There's four Culverin that remain, but um, at the same time, the, the unit nap mass here against Puppy Paw is massive, and it means that he's not able to hold on to the keep. With the keep going down, that's going to mean that he can begin to transition his way through here. Now we can see that Beastie almost looks to be turning up towards that northern side. So we've got units that are moving up there. He's got plenty of, of vision up towards that position, but he's looking to do a bit of a run by, a bit of a run around. He's sitting on 170, 170 two population at the moment. We can hear what was a boar being taken. A boar now going to get in on the action on that keep. Working to take it down. No, don't do it, Pumba. Don't you don't you dare, Pumba. Look at him. Just go. He's relentless. That culverin just going to be working its way through this. But the boar as well as the fire just going to be taking down the keep. The boar single-handedly. Look at the strong man right now just taking down the keep. Good night, sweet prince. The boar, if it had anything to say about it, it was that you are absolutely not welcome here. And now the boar begins to un unleash its terror upon on that mining camp. Look how much damage it's doing. It's doing 15 damage a pop on the mining camp. Damn, mining camp. You are in trouble. Oh, it's because it's got ranged armor. It doesn't have melee armor. Oh, that's massive. Actually, it does have melee armor. It's got plus five. No, it's got plus five versus fire. Oh, this is terrible. The boar is going to just take names right now. Beastie Cutie losing his entire base to a boar. Culverin going to be going down, though. And things aren't looking good right now for his opponent because the men at arms have made it, made their way through the base. A single land shard also going to be in there as well. Puppy Paul going to be trying to defend against it. He should be able to hold this. The land sharks are definitely going to be able to help him out here. Still no villages being made at the, at the Palace of Swabia. He's sitting on 75 villages. It's definitely not enough. And Beastie's trying to find a way through this. He is definitely eking out his advantages when it comes to this series. And remember that, speaking of this series, this series right now is on match point. If Beastie Cutie loses this, or wins this game rather, he goes through to the grand finals. And that means that Puppy Paw is going to have to play for that third, fourth place. So it, it is an incredibly important game for him to, to hold on and to try and win here. Puppy Paw losing more and more villages. Just Beastie unable to just... Beastie just relentless here, just all over the map. Puppy Paw still yet to really go for a push. And honestly, I feel like if Puppy Paw had just gone for a bit of a death push here, he might have actually potentially won. He would have been able to, to rally. Oh, there's a lot of units here. There's six Bombards. There's two Culverin. There's a lot. There's reinforcements coming out all day. I don't think there's any chance that even, even if he'd gone for a death push that he would have been able to hold. Maybe if he'd brought villagers as well, then he could have potentially gone for it. But the numbers here are just not, not the healthiest, unfortunately. And it means that he's not going to be able to be successful. Now Beastie moving out, or rather Puppy moving out over towards his position. A little bit of a wall going to come up. I can't help but feel this wall is probably not going to achieve too much for Beastie. He's got no stone in the bank, so obviously not able to get out a big stone wall. Instead, just going to put up a little bit of a palisade. Mm. If there's one thing I've learned about walls, it is that you can work. You can walk around them. Land, Land Connect moving in. Beastie Cutie got to be careful. He's got a lot of villagers out over on this gold mine. He's on 105 villagers. This could be the way back in for Puppy Paw. Puppy Paw actually looking to massacre all the villagers over on the gold mine. It's looking terrible. It is a genocide on the gold mine right now. Beastie Cutie going to be losing a huge amount of villagers. He goes down to 87 villagers. Puppy Paw, though, he's on 56. What is going on right now? There are genocides on both sides. And now Beastie Cutie looks to head down the middle. You can see him focusing down that Palisade gate. He's going to be trying his best to close out this game right now. Plenty of units here. He knows that if he gets behind these lines, he's going to be able to continue to idle his enemy. And obviously, idling at this point in the game is so impactful because not only do you potentially kill those villagers, but you force them to be idle. You've got no food income, and with no food income means no replacement villagers, and it just means that you're in such a difficult spot. And it all just goes back to the fact that we've never seen the stone wall at the front here for Puppy Paw. He just thought he could play it out with a palisade wall, and he's been punished so many times for it. And it really just goes to show, if you're going to be playing these late game positions, you need to be stone walling. You cannot get away with just a single pal uh, a single palace, I was going to say. A single palisade, rather. Uh, I, I think that's after Anastasia Palace. She's the uh, premier for Queensland, for anybody unfamiliar. That's where that, that came from. But uh, Puppy Paw really looking to try and hold on. 
it's just, it's very, very tough. And Puppy Paw actually building up a very decent mass of Siege here. You guys will know him as Siege Cutie, and that is because he loves to get that Siege out. Over on this eastern, western flank, it's been very quiet. Horseman back towards the base, still dishing out damage. He's managed to find a way through up on this north side. No, I take it back. He was just look. He was just up here, just causing havoc. But uh, now going to be turning back his attention towards the middle. Oh my lord! I apologize for missing a puppy paw, taking out all of the siege now for Beastie Cutie. Oh my lord! I can't believe it. Now Beastie going to be actually getting himself caught off guard. Puppy paw on 147 population. Beastie Cutie on 173, and now all of a sudden things aren't looking too good for Beastie Cutie. A huge difference right now between these two guys, but now Beastie Cutie going to be looking to potentially trade out the Siege from his opponent. There's huge dances going on between these two guys, just trading away Siege non-stop, and Beastie knows if he goes for the Siege, if he knows if he goes for the Bombards, if he goes for the Culverin, then that's going to slow out the, 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 the stall. Oh my lord, it's going to stall out the push. I'm just losing it at this point in this game. This is intense. This is insane. There is so much action going on in this game, and now another attack going to get thrown down here over on the keep. Obviously, the keep going to be able to provide plenty of cover fire. Got that boiling oil as well. We head back to the center of the game, where the, or center of the map, rather, where the game is continuing to unfold. You can see a culverin moving forward. No villagers being pulled here for his opponent. Means that this is a, a, a little bit of a dire push because a single bombard emplacement just fires down upon that culverin. It's going to lose its life. In fact, a, a big bad wolf goes, looks at it's in its direction and it goes down. That little bit of AoE is going to provide all the damage it needs to take out that culverin. And now, finally, villagers coming to the front line, but it, you can't help but it might be a little bit too late. Bombards continuing to work their magic. Now going to be looking to focus down a keep, potentially. You can see that Court Architects has come in. It has come in. Court Architects has come in, so he's got 6.3k health on those walls now. So a lot of health in these late game positions. And now Beastie is just attacking absolutely everywhere. You can see, we'll take a look over at his opponent and down to 52 villagers, less than 70 military as well. And Beastie looks to hold on this position on the front. Units continuing to run out. Beastie Cutie trying his best now. He is looking very good. He's managed to lose a lot of units, but now turning the tides of battle over towards his opponent. A lot of lands connects going to be coming out here as well. You can see on the sacred site, they're dancing around, trying their best to battle it out. But it looks like Puppy Paw going to be able to take his position. But at the same time, the raids continue coming. Oh, the Man at arms behind enemy lines. Beastie Cutie just absolutely everywhere. He's over on the gold mine. He's over in the farm line. He's absolutely everywhere right now. And Puppy Port, he's got two villages on wood, seven villages on food, 42 villages in total. Oh, you got a villager printer, but it's not even working. Wait, that's the Regnus Cathedral. There's the, there's the villager printer. But Puppy Port is just in absolute shambles right now. Beastie Cutie running through the base. And that is going to be it. Ladies and gentlemen, good game gets called. Beastie Cutie goes through to the grand final. What a conclusion to this series a 42 minute holy roman empire thriller i hope you guys have enjoyed this casted game make sure you check out egc tv i'll leave a link in the description of where you can watch the grand finals of this series that is going to be casted by yours truly